Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how my team and I set up Performance Max campaigns. These are the exact strategies that we use every single month to scale up e-commerce stores with Performance Max campaigns. Setting up Performance Max campaigns may seem simple. Fill in a few fields, hit launch, and let Google take care of the rest. But here's the thing. If you're not careful with your settings, you could end up wasting your budget with no sales to show for it. Pmax campaigns need more than just the basics. You need to know exactly what to optimize, what assets to use, and how to set it up the right way to see real returns. For this setup, I'm going to assume that you have your conversion tracking set up correctly and your feed set up in Google Merchant Center next. If you don't have either of these set up, I'm gonna leave links below to videos on how to do this yourself. Okay, let's get into it. First, sign into your Google Ads account. Go to this page, the campaign section that you'll find here on the left. Click on the blue plus button to begin creating a new campaign. Here, you can go ahead and select creating a campaign without Google's gold guidance. Since we already know we want a Performance Max campaign type. Select Performance Max here. Next, you'll be asked about which conversion goals to set up for campaign performance optimization. For e-commerce, you'll want to focus on purchases. The next section here is where you'll connect this campaign to your Merchant Center account. This is critical if you want Google to show ads directly for your products. Finally, let's name this campaign and click continue. The next page outlines the series of steps on the left here needed to set up your campaign. The first step is to select how you want Google optimizing its bidding. If you choose conversions, Google will aim at simply getting orders no matter their value. If you choose conversion value, Google will aim for getting the most revenue regardless of the number of orders. Notice that I'm not taking the extra step of clicking this set target return on ad spend just now. That's because Google doesn't have enough data for effective targeting at this moment. It can work for more advanced accounts with rich history, but for this walkthrough, I'm gonna leave it off. I'm also going to leave customer acquisition unchecked. This setting asks if you want to adjust your bidding to help gain new customers. For small e-com stores, my advice is that you don't use this setting. The reason is that you probably don't have enough data for Google to really achieve what it's saying. In my experience, this only really works well for large accounts spending millions of dollars per year. Okay, next up, let's choose the location that we want our Performance Max campaign to target. I'll set it for the USA. For language, we'll just keep it set for English. In the settings for automatically created assets, there's much discussion about when and if to use them. We've personally seen strong results when they're left at their default. You're letting Performance Max customize assets like headlines, descriptions, and images. It uses your website info and goes beyond what you've provided. The same thing with the final URL. Checking this means you let Performance Max choose which landing page it will send a shopper to. For video, it's asking permission to modify your uploaded videos to create additional vertical and square versions. There's no reason why not to, unless you simply don't want to have videos as part of your campaign. Below here, we'll see the settings that are typical for the older traditional campaigns. Add schedule, start and end dates, campaign URL options, and brand exclusions. We'll leave those blank for now and click next. The next section is all about your assets. To start, Google is extremely eager to offer you its generative AI to help you create assets. If you're comfortable in doing this, then follow its prompts here. This can certainly be helpful, but my team and I still opt for manual asset creation. That's because we work hard to understand the brand, the product, and the audience. With that understanding and our experience, we tend to create better performing assets than AI. So I'm just gonna click skip. On this page, we're finally gonna create an asset group. By the way, guys, if you're looking for more personalized, hands-on guidance for how to set up your Performance Max campaigns, I've got something for you. We've created a community to help you guys out. It's called the Keycom Academy. And it's where my team and I help e-com store owners like you get everything set up and running profitably. We're in there every week answering questions, hosting live Q&A calls, and creating courses to help you scale. There's also an awesome community of other e-commerce store owners that are building honest stores and generating real profits. We're all helping each other out, sharing wins. It's actually awesome. I'll leave a link down below. Go and check it out, and I'd love to see you inside. Now, let's dive back into creating the campaign. Starting out, I'll leave the asset group name at its default. Next, for listing groups, you can either choose to include all your products, or you can filter down which products will be included from your catalog. 
For this walkthrough, I'll simply go with all products. The product selection can always be changed with the listing groups at a future time. For business name, you'll use your public facing doing business as name, as this will be shown with your ads. Note that it needs to match the business name that you've set up in your Merchant Center account. For logo, you'll add your logo right here and you'll set your branding colors here as well. This lets Google format test ads with visuals that match your store's brand. Now, for the main assets, you want to set your final URL here. This is the page that Google is gonna mainly look at for sending the traffic to. Next, you're going to write your ad headlines. You don't need to fill out all 15 headlines, but it is recommended to do that if you have great copy to use. Anything that promotes your unique selling proposition, definitely put them in. Also, any benefit that will attract the shopper, such as free shipping, fast delivery, or price match guarantees. These should all go in these headlines. Google will test mix and match versions of these headlines to find the optimal combinations. We talk more about reviewing these combinations for optimizing Pmax campaigns in another video. I'll leave a link to that one down below. The same goes for the ad descriptions as well as the images you'll add here. I suggest using your best hero images, meaning lifestyle shots of your products getting used or the products themselves. If you have any videos, then upload them here. Don't worry if you don't already have videos, that's just fine. Google can create decent videos for testing as long as you have at least three images added. For site links, add them here as well. Keep in mind that you can also have site links added at an account level and they will be used here. For your call to action, Google prefers that you let this be automated, but for an e-commerce store, choosing shop now is also a safe option. For the rest of the asset types, they are the same as what you'll find in other campaign types. This section is more advanced and I advise staying away from the HTML5 setting unless you know what you're doing. For the display path, this shows in your ads when they appear on search, just like in the responsive search ads. Add what you think catches the shopper's interest. If you need to set a specific URL for mobile devices, do that here. Finally, if you have display banner ads that you want Google to use, Add them here as well. Okay, that's it for assets. The next section is giving Google signals to help it target your shopping audience. The first part is search themes, which you can add up to 25 of. I'll add a few to show you what it looks like. Search themes tell Google that shoppers using these search terms are likely looking for your products. Next is the audience signal. This is your chance to guide Google towards your shopping audience. The first segment type here is your first party data. Most importantly, this includes things like your customer match list. It's one of the most powerful signals you can give to Google. It tells Google who your best buyers are and it helps it find more just like them. If you skip this step, you're basically telling Google to guess who your customers are. And that means leaving easy revenue on the table. If you're not sure how to get your customer match list from Shopify, I break it all down in another video. I'll leave a link to that video down below. Moving on to these signals, they're also a great opportunity for you to refine your signal. I advise choosing the in-market audiences over the affinity audiences. I'll give you an example. If we were selling baseball equipment, we would want to add that as an audience signal, people who are in market for baseball equipment. The next type of segment is demographics. You can choose a demographic like gender. Now, keep in mind, if I want to unselect female here, that doesn't mean that Google will exclude advertising to females. It's simply using your selection as a signal to target a male audience more over a female audience. But Google will still test ads with a female audience, and if it finds success, it expands further. Also in demographic, you can add age ranges, parental status, and household income. I'll choose advertising to the top 20% of household incomes. Finally, you can give this audience signal a name. That's useful if you want to reuse it in other asset groups. Let's click next and move on to setting a budget. Do not let Google push you into a specific budget that you're not comfortable with. It will give you estimates and you cannot depend on them. They are interesting information, certainly if you are an experienced ad manager, but by no means are these numbers any kind of promise. Set a custom budget for what you're comfortable with spending. At last, the final page is your summary. Be sure to review it all and make sure that you're happy with everything. 
If Google's unhappy with anything, such as not enough assets, it will stop here and make you go back. Once you've taken care of everything that it has taken issue with, you can then hit publish campaign. You've now completed your performance max campaign with its first ad asset group. Guys, let me know if you have any questions down below. Just so you know, guys, this video is part of our free performance max course. It's completely free. It's going to show you how to set up, optimize and scale your performance max campaigns to over 100K per month. I'll leave a link to the full course. so You can take a look down below. Also, if you're an e-commerce store owner already doing 20K a month with your e-commerce store, my team and I can help you scale to seven figures and beyond. We manage Google ads, meta ads, and all things e-commerce for our clients. You can book a call to learn about working with us. I'll leave a link down below. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to check out our other videos. This one here might be especially useful for you.